Hey, thanks for tuning in to Twang and Bang. I was having a conversation the other day with a, a bow hunter who was telling me how he practices in his basement, just like I used to do decades ago when I lived in Philly. And he said he missed his target and he buried his arrow into a cinder block, as in it stuck in there like this. And I thought, well, if he could do that with a regular bow, what would the world's most powerful crossbow do to a cinder block? We're going to find out next on Twang and Bang. Though I bought this crossbow in 2010, the Scorbit RDT-165 is still the world's most powerful production crossbow. It generates almost 165 foot-pounds of kinetic energy. In order to give me the best chance of getting that kinetic energy into the cinder block, I'm going to use an arrow bolt from FireKnock. It's one of the toughest carbon fiber crossbow arrows that you can buy. I'm going to concentrate that kinetic energy with this field tip from PSC. It's the pointiest steel crossbow field tip that I've got. Just look at how much rotation is still left on that shaft even after it's impacted the cinder block. That's the fire knock arrow veins for you. Wow. That stuck in there. That is buried in there. That's pretty cool. As you can see from the end of that carbon arrow, it just splintered when it hit that cinder block. And that's to be expected. But when it does that, all of the mass of that arrow stops pushing on the insert, so you lose some penetration from it doing that. Regardless, that arrow still managed to push that insert in almost a full inch into the side of the cinder block, and I needed a pair of pliers and a bit of muscle to get it out. Okay, that was not as cool as I was hoping it was going to be. I was hoping for that cinder block to at least crack. But I am going to get that cinder block to crack. And that's why this time I'm going to use my suppressed 16-inch 300 blackout AR. And it's going to put these 220 grain SMK loads out at about 1,050 feet per second. I think we're going to get the effect that I was originally looking for. Wait till you see this next shot. Those 220 grain Sierra Mash Kings just ate that thing up. Let's see that again from a couple of different angles. That was more what I was hoping was going to happen when the RDT-165 hit it, but of course, carbon fiber arrows just can't take a smack like that. Maybe if I had a heavy-duty aluminum arrow like an Easton Full Metal Jacket made up, it might have made it all the way through. I don't know, but it wasn't any problem for a 220 grain SMK load going at over a thousand feet per second. And that was a lot of fun picking apart that cinder block with this 300 blackout. If you want to learn more about the RDT-165 and the bows that have replaced it, be sure to click the link in the video description below. If you like this video, please take the time to log into YouTube and click the like button. Now more than ever, YouTube needs to know that you like firearms or any program. Be sure to click right here to subscribe so you can catch my next videos on bows, guns, and other cool stuff. I really appreciate you watching Twang and Bang, and I hope to see you next time. Hey, thanks for tuning in to Twang. Great. My neighbor kicked his dog out of the house probably because it was begging at the dinner table and it wants back in. Right now, 
while I need to do this video. And no, don't suggest that I do anything with this and that dog. He's a good, he's a good dog. Shame on you for thinking.